adults, but maybe we could start by talking about, um, you know, misconceptions that happen um, with with leasing beats online and things like that. Um, what advice would you have for newcomers to beat stars, especially for those who are looking to start, um, you know, signing up for beat stars publishing? What are some misconceptions that you might be able to knock out um, of the park? Or if you can think about yourself from when you, um, you know, started becoming a producer and wanting to sign with beat stars publishing, like what are some of the questions that you asked that you got the answers to that you think everyone else should know, if that makes sense. Um, Gavin, start with you. So I think like the big thing that I always think about uh, now, like in the current place that I'm at, is I wish that I would have just been more consistent like along the way and just with like putting beats out and stuff. And even if it's not my best work and I don't feel like it's my best work, mm -hmm. I feel like it's still worth putting out. Cause I feel like a lot of the loops that I send out each week aren't always my favorite and those tend to be the ones that get used the most and like that I don't know that's the common theme like every single week for me I think um we spoke about this on the show last week but I've been speaking to more and more people who keep saying like the beats and or in your case the loops that are just like the throwaways always are the ones that get picked up and then you guys are just like questioning yourself like at what's really good um, so I think that's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty interesting and a good point. Just being consistent, um, is a big thing. Um, Eddie, what about you? Um, I guess it'll be like, uh, trying to keep everything or keep everything simple because, you know, if you keep everything simple, then that gives the artist like the most room to work. Mm -hmm. And like, if you add too many complicated sounds, like too much ear candy, too many perks, too many, everything, it just, it compute. I mean, I wouldn't say confused. It would just like, uh, I guess, frustrate the artist in a way because they wouldn't know like how to pick the right pocket to like flow. Yeah, just leaving leaving space for people to do their thing, basically. Um, at the end of the day, it's a collaboration. So, you know, you definitely have to make room for your collaborators too. And I'm sure the things you start with aren't always the things you end with. Um, so thank you for that, yes. Donnie, what about you? Uh, for me, I just say, like, as a producer early on, just, like, just trust yourself. Like, um, I think when you're starting, it's so early to get, like, caught up in trying to sound like what's popping instead of, like, how you make beats. Like, that's really, like, some – that's that's really important, I feel. Like, you got to really stay true to your sound. And if you make something like a certain way, just keep that because that's what makes you unique. Uh, yeah, stay true to your sound. Trust your sound, trust your yeah. gut. Zach. I'm on like the same thing what he just said, but uh, I agree with Gavin with the consistency, like just being consistent. I feel like that play a big, that plays a big part into stuff, like being consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah, you that, that's really it, just consistency. Yeah, you need the practice and you need to just put yourself out there as much as possible.